Are we live? Are we recording? I think we are. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Um, so, my name's Julia, you, and I have decided to start a podcast like everybody and their moms. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may know me as Fit Lawyer Julia. I'm also on Twitch as Fit Lawyer Julia. Um, and it's been a long time. And this is an idea that I've been thinking about for a long time <clears throat> and something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but life happens, prep happens. <laughs> but now I think I'm ready to dedicate the time and energy into this. I just wrapped up two of my, or I just finished two shows um, in bodybuilding. So I have a lot more food in me, a lot more energy in me, and I'm going to have a lot more time to, um, to devote to this podcast. So again, my name is Julia Yu. I'm an attorney by trade. I got, um, I got my bar license in 2016, spent most of my career practicing labor and employment. Um, and I have now expanded my practice into landlord tenant as well as real estate and business entities. So like entity formation and stuff like that. Um, and so I will be using this podcast to discuss my career a little bit. Um, in the legal field as a woman of color, as an immigrant woman, um, and just the different experiences I, I encountered also as a young attorney, because I was very young when I first uh, started practicing. I was only 24 years old. Um, and this is still, even in 2023, a very conservative career. Obviously, it's it's changed since... Um, you know, like everything else, it's it's changed with the times, but comparatively, it's still a very conservative <clears throat> career. Uh, but I've been very lucky in my career. My first job was a fully remote position, and this was before COVID. So I was working remote before remote was was like a thing, you know. So this law firm, my first firm. Um, was actually quite pioneer on that. They were very efficient and um, allowed all of us pre-litigation attorneys to work from home. So I made the most of that experience and traveled to about a dozen countries by myself. I kind of just traveled for two years straight um, while my mom watched my dog so I was very blessed and lucky to be able to do that, um, both, you know, because <clears throat> I had a job that allowed me to time wise and financial wise. And the fact that my mom was able to watch my dog for free. And at that time, I didn't have any leases. I wasn't locked in an apartment lease or anything like that. So I was able to um, pick up and go. Um, and so I, I want to also share that share that experience with you guys as a single solo female traveler. Um, I've been to, you know, some countries where people wouldn't worry too much, like, like different countries in Europe, you know, Italy, um, or even smaller ones like Croatia, Montenegro. But when people hear that I went to Egypt by myself, they are <clears throat> very concerned and, very worried. Um, so I just want to be able to share my solo travel experience and kind of give some tips on that, especially for women, um, solo women traveling, because there, there is a heightened risk, but you know, you got to be smart and, and just trust your guts and do your research beforehand. Um, so I will be touching on that in later episodes, as well as speak to some so other solo female travelers, whether they're vloggers or just about their solo travel experience, because I think that's one of the most empowering things a woman can do is <clears throat> to, to solo travel. Um, if you have the opportunity to go abroad, great. If not, honestly, even going to 
a different state or a different city by yourself can feel so empowering because it's just like this feeling like, yeah, I can do it. I am a woman and I can do it alone. Um, so yeah, so it feels good. Um, and of course I will be talking about bodybuilding because that is something I am deeply passionate about. And even though it's something I've only been doing for the past four years, it's something that I've decided to dive headfirst. And throughout this four year bodybuilding journey, I've had my ups and downs. I've been consistent. I've been inconsistent. Um, and it's really, it's, it's also impacted a lot of my relationship with people because I was a big partier. I was a big drinker. Um, you know, I used to say the only time I, I run is to catch a flight or to the open bar. Um, but of course, in, in bodybuilding, we do a lot of cardio. <laughs> Not necessarily what I enjoy, but you know, it's, it's part of the sport and it's just something that comes with it. And as someone who did not grow up as an athlete, I, I never played a sport growing up. I was very into academia and that is partially because of my Asian, my Asian background. Uh, my, my parents are from China. I'm from China. And it was very much so like, you know, do your schoolwork, be in as many AP classes as you can just achieve, achieve, achieve academically. Like sport was not, uh, it was not encouraged. And if anything, it was, um, discouraged, right? Because it would take time from my ability to study or, or take community college classes outside of high school, um, which I did. (laughs) And I, I, so, um, you know, as, as someone who's entered into the sports world and a very intense sport at that in, in her later twenties, um, I've had kind of like a different journey than, than a lot of the athletes who grew up their entire life as athletes whose bodies are used to, uh, or not just bodies, but also mentally used to the level of physicalness that, I was not mentally prepared for, and I don't think my body was physically prepared for it. And there's, there was just so much, um, I didn't know about being an athlete and about the bodybuilding sport that I have since learned. And I'm continuing to learn every day, um, both regarding the sport as well as overall physical exercise and food and nutrition the human body in general, um, I always say I'm a lifelong student, even though I'm not technically in school anymore, my career requires me to take continued legal education classes. So, um, you know, my career even (laughs) requires it, but at the end of the day, I'm just very curious. And if it's something that's interests me, then I'm going to take the initiative and, and learn. Um, and that includes bodybuilding as well. So I'm very thankful for this sport. I've learned so much about, um, not just my body, but like the human body in general, the muscles, what food does for you, the fat, carb, protein, all of that. So, um, I'm really, really excited to share that with you. And, Um, I'm really excited to speak to some professional bodybuilders and even Olympians um, about their journey to the biggest bodybuilding stage in the world. Um, So I have some really cool things planned and I'm really excited to share with you guys. And yeah, stay tuned. Thanks, guys.